Lesson 28, Jesus' Resurrection. In today's lesson, we will conclude Matthew's Gospel and his historical account of Jesus' life, ministry, death, and most importantly, his resurrection. The resurrection of Christ is the foundation of Christianity and the basis upon which Christians have confidence that they too shall be raised to be with Christ. In our last lesson, we saw how Jesus was very cruelly executed by the Romans because of the Jews' hatred for Jesus. Jesus had admitted to them that he was their long-awaited Messiah, but they did not believe his words. They were so envious and filled with hatred that they cried out in fury for his blood until finally Pilate conceded to their angry cries and had Jesus scourged and crucified. After the death of Jesus upon the cross, his body was taken down by Joseph of Arimathea, wrapped in new clean linen cloths and placed in a nearby tomb hewn out of stone. Now early on the third day, that is, Sunday morning, while it was still dark, some of the women, including Mary Magdalene, visited the tomb in hopes of completing the embalming of the body of Jesus with spices. At the tomb, the women found the stone had been rolled away from the mouth of the tomb, and two angels appeared to them, reporting that Jesus had risen from the dead. The angels instructed the women to report back to his disciples about his resurrection and prepare to meet him in Galilee. While some of the women made their way back to the city, they met Jesus on the way, and he said to them they should not fear, but go and report to his brethren that he was alive and they should meet him in Galilee. Meanwhile, the soldiers that had been guarding the tomb had gone back to the Jewish authorities to report that the tomb was empty and the stone rolled away. The Jewish elders paid these soldiers a large sum of money to fabricate a story about the disciples stealing the body of Jesus while they had fallen asleep. Though the Jewish elders, along with the Roman authorities, did their best to get rid of Jesus and seal him in the tomb, they were powerless to resist the mighty power of God. They tried to circulate their false story, but later when Peter testified of Jesus being raised from the dead, the evidence was plain enough for the people of Jerusalem to believe, and many of them placed their trust in Jesus as the true and living Messiah of Israel and Savior of their soul. Matthew records that the disciples met Jesus in Galilee, where they worshipped him, but some still doubted. The Gospel accounts end with Jesus' great commission to his disciples to go into all the world and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He instructs them to teach the new converts all things that they had been taught. Jesus also promises to be with his disciples until the end of this age. When we read this remarkable event in history, we might find it hard to imagine how such a great miracle could have taken place, just as the disciples at first had their doubts. However, Jesus appears on several occasions to his disciples over a period of 40 days before he ascended back into heaven to assure and confirm to his followers that indeed he has been raised from the dead. This helps us today to also be assured of the resurrection, for we have these historical accounts of those who are eyewitnesses of Jesus having been raised up. The fact that Jesus had risen is God's promise that we also shall be raised up with him, that is, all of those who have placed their trust in Jesus as their Lord and Savior. The risen Lord Jesus now sends forth his disciples to proclaim the good news to the world, so that others will believe, be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not only are the apostles commissioned to tell the world about Jesus and his teachings, but every Christian is also part of this great 
work of spreading the good news. If you are a Christian, you should do your part to proclaim that Jesus died for our sins and God has raised him from the dead and now we can be saved through faith in him. Sometimes we might think that the work of evangelism belongs to just the evangelists, but God wants all of his children to spread the good news of salvation. If every Christian took an active part in witnessing for Christ, then we could evangelize the world much faster. Remember that Jesus promised to be with us throughout this age, so we can depend on his help as we seek to share his message of salvation with the world. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 28 verse 19.